So you've got an old Hasselblad body and the battery is not holding a good charge anymore. Hasselblad stopped making these and they don't make the batteries anymore. So you can't get them new. Buying a used one, you may end up with a battery worse than you already have. So I'm gonna show you how to swap out the cell. It's not a big deal. And for about 20 bucks, you'll have a brand new, fully functioning battery. So you need a multimeter, wire strippers, soldering gun, solder, electrical tape, and these connectors. So opening up is not difficult. There's two tabs and you'll just need a little pry tool to open up uh, the top. You're gonna to start in this curved area over here where there's the first tab. And then in the back, there's this little button that holds in the back part of the top. So you just need to kind of work in there and gently pry. It's pretty durable, but you don't wanna go whole hog at it. So just work it in there and then the front should just lift up and out. And the back is held in, you can see here this has a little protrusion and it fits into that hole. You can see here's the tab and this one looks to be a little cracked. Uh, someone's probably been in here before, but, and this comes out, you don't want to lose it. So just push it out and set it aside. And you can see there, there's the protrusion that fits into that hole on the back of the the top there and that's it that's all that holds it in uh, there's probably a little bit of glue but nothing complicated and here's the battery from inside so it's two cells there are 3.7 volts each and they're wired in series uh, so wiring in series will double the voltage and keep the battery's capacity the same. So you can see here's the new battery, and it's 3.7 volts. The battery capacity is larger than the original Hasselblad battery. So you'll actually get a little bit more life out of the battery uh, in terms of how long you can shoot with it before it'll need a recharge. So to wire in series, you're gonna take one red and one black and wire them together and the other positive red and negative black will get wired back onto the board um, and and that's how you'll get your in series and your 7.4 volts um, it's really it's really simple so now we've got to take this old battery apart there's a board on there that i'm holding you can see uh, that we need to reuse so just remove all the tape and whatever's holding it together. There are different variations of these batteries. So yours may not be assembled the same as this one, but this seems to be the most common. And you can see here, this is how where the batteries are wired together. There's a positive and negative jumper holding the two together, and that's what's doubling the voltage there. And then here's your other positive and negative on this end, which are connected to the board. So just take your time, taking it apart, just work through it. It's, it's not complicated. You can see there's the positive and negative on the other side, and you can see the uh, tabs connecting to the board. So like I said, we need to save the board. So you just cut the other rest of the stuff away. I see I'm just using my wire strippers to cut the jumper and then just peel it apart. There's just some glue holding them together. But be careful with the other two tabs that are soldered to the board. Mm. Yeah. And there you go. That's it. As you can see here, one of the wires broke while taking things apart it's not a big deal it may happen to you may not happen with you but neither just to say we, we don't need this connector so we're going to get rid of this we're going to cut it off and we're going to use the extra wires to extend our leads to the board when we rebuild this you want to use some heat shrink 
to protect our new connections. And this is an easy solder job. You don't need much. If you don't have much experience, uh, do a little practicing before until you get comfortable. So you can see you're just soldering the new wires on to extend things and we'll put some heat shrink on. And generally I just use a, a lighter is fine and it'll work to shrink, to sorry, to heat up and shrink the shrink wrap and done. And you can see our boards there, and we're just going to strip some. You just need a little bit of wire exposed. And the solder's already on the board, so that makes things a little bit easier. But I'm going to pre-tin the wires with some solder just to help things along. And you can see the board is marked positive and negative, so you're going to want to solder the red wire to the positive and the black to the negative. Um, so you can see it in here where the board is marked. So put a little solder on. And so you're going to want to heat up the solder on the board and you'll see when it comes liquid, it'll sort of create a little nice smooth puddle. And then just dab your new wire into it. And there you go. It's a good solid connection. And there again, you can see the negative and the positive on the board. Okay, so here are our new batteries. And we're going to use those connectors. But we can add with those new connectors that we bought. So we can connect the batteries to the board and years down the line if you need to replace the batteries again it now makes it super easy just undo the connectors put a new battery on put everything back together and you're done so no soldering nothing will be needed in the future anyways just stripping the wires prepping everything you can see here i'm twisting together the positive to the negative and this is what we'll use to create our in series wiring for the new batteries again this will get us from the 3.7 volts to 7.4 volts and i'm going to replace this tab with some wire um, to make things a little bit easier but desoldering it no big deal it's the same just put the solder gun to the old tab until the solder gets soft and just pop it right off and there we go, putting the new one on. So the green wire acts as our jumper to create the 7.4 volts needed. So you can see what I'm doing here. I'm soldering the green wire to the positive and negative leads that we twist it to connect it together. And then we're just going to protect things with some heat shrink and it's just best practice. Um, I like using the heat shrink versus tape. Tape just ends up coming apart over time. So there you go. We've got our positive, negative, our jumper. And then on this other end, this is what we're going to connect our new harness to. And this is our, our connector to the batteries. And again, so same process as before, just heat up the solder and so it puddles and then you make your connections. We're almost done. So here's all of our connectors. You can see how everything's laid out. If your board looks like this, you know, you can use this kind of as a map, but it's really pretty straightforward. And so now I'm going to connect our batteries. And 
we're going to use our multimeter after we connect it to confirm that we've got our 7.4 volts. And these connectors are great. They're small, they're secure, you can undo them. So, and this is again, in the future, if you need to swap out batteries, that's all you need to do. Undo the connectors, put new batteries in. So we're gonna go set our multimeter to nine volts. We're gonna to go to our positive and negative and confirm. Here we go, 7.8 volts. So we're great. That works fine. That's not a problem. And now we just need to pack everything up and put it back into the outer shell, the holder for the battery grip. And you just want to make sure your batteries are um, clean, tidy, nicely packed up. Um, this is a slightly taller battery, which is how I was able to get the extra um, amp hours out of it versus the original battery, um, which makes it for a tight fit, but it does get in there um, as long as you organize your wires well and sort of plan. You want the connectors on one end of the battery, on uh, one side there, um, and that will help get everything in and they do make a shorter battery if you prefer. And I'm gonna put links to all this stuff, the tools, the batteries, etc., down in the description below. Now, once you put these back together, you will need to charge it fully before the camera will recognize that it's attached. But we are otherwise done. So get your charger. See, so here, I'm gonna put it on and go to turn it on and it will not turn on. And don't get alarmed. Like I said, you, you're gonna to have to put this on the charger, the Hasselblad charger and give it a full charge. So there we go. It's been fully charged now and I'm gonna reconnect. And charging didn't take long. I think it was like 20 or 30 minutes. And watch, you'll see now. There we go. And on and off. It's great. Everything works fine. While I was waiting for the battery to fully charge, um, I took apart another one. So I'm going to show you. This is another board. You can see it was different, but it's the same concept. Uh, things are just in different locations. So the blue wires, the jumper uh, instead of the green and you can see where the ground and the positive are on either end and um their connections are all done so i did this while i waited so if you have more than one battery this is you know you can work on um but really simple straightforward again you know uh, the connectors are great because it sort of future proofs things in terms of just being able to swap out batteries. And uh, that's it. I hope this works out for you and good luck.